Okay, here's another example of an SN1 reaction that's going to involve rearrangement in the mechanism. Here's our alkyl halide, and we are going to be reacting it with ethanol, CH3CH2OH. And again, we're going to need a little heat for this reaction to occur. When you look at the alkyl halide, because it's secondary, you don't know if this is going to be an SN1 or an SN2, but when you see the nucleophile, uh, an alcohol, poter, polar, protic solvent, and a weak nucleophile, both of those things tell you that the mechanism is going to be SN1. SN1 mechanisms are always going to start by loss of the leaving group. SN1 reactions are always one molecule falling apart. That's what the one represents. And that gives us this carbocation. Just in case you have a hard time visualizing it, don't forget that there is a hydrogen on that carbon. There's a hydrogen here. A lot of times we don't show them. Don't forget that there's a hydrogen present on that carbon. That's a secondary carbocation, and every single time you see a secondary carbocation in SN1, you should ask yourself, can I turn it into a tertiary? Is there anything that I can do? Look to the adjacent carbons. Here you have uh, two hydrogens attached. Down here you have a methyl group and a hydrogen attached. You could bring one of these hydrogens over to here, put the positive charge on this carbon instead. That would also give you a secondary carbocation. It's not doing anything to improve the stability of the molecule, so you're not going to see that happen. Down here, you've got a hydrogen that you could shift up to that spot. You also have a methyl group that you could shift up to that spot. If you shifted the methyl group up into this position, your positive charge would be down here, the methyl group would be gone, you'd have, again, a secondary carbocation, no improvement to the stability of, of the uh, intermediate, so it's not going to do that. But if you shift the hydrogen up into this spot, the hydrogen will be gone, and that will put the positive charge on this carbon, that will be a tertiary carbocation. So that is a favorable move for the molecule to make. It's going to shift that hydride up. Sometimes we write that on the arrow or under the arrow that we're actually doing a hydride shift. Then you actually are going to end up with two hydrogens up here and a positive charge down there. Both of those carbocations, the first one that we made and then the one produced by the rearrangement, are going to react with the ethanol nucleophile. Let me show you an abbreviation for ethanol. ET, which stands for ethyl OH, makes it a little easier to write. And sometimes uh, LG Wade throws that at you without you knowing what it represents. So just in case you've encountered it, that's what it's talking about, ethanol. And the ethanol, the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen, are going to attack the carbocation for uh, either one, the secondary or the tertiary. And we're going to get a transition state. One of them looks like this. And the other transition state looks like that. And then you use, you want to resolve this positive charge on the oxygen. You're going to use a second ethanol molecule to abstract that hydrogen. to put the oxygen-hydrogen bonding electrons back onto the oxygen atom as a lone pair. And your two products will be 
that one. And again, the ET stands for an ethyl group, CH2CH3. That's your second product. And the, this product is your major product. Because it was formed from the tertiary carbocation, this one is your minor product. Because it came from the secondary, less stable carbocation. That is the end of this section and the end of the details of SN1. I'm going to write some study questions. Actually, just one study question for this section. Uh, when do carbocations undergo rearrangement? In SN1, I will. I really want you to train yourself to. Just automatically, as soon as you see a secondary carbocation, I want, I want you to train yourself to attempt to turn it tertiary. And then I also want you to take a couple minutes to summarize the section on rearrangement. 